Right now, let's do a little Q&A, and I'll answer all your best, all your burning questions, the best of my abilities, and we'll go from there. All right, then. And uh, Q&A. Let me get that, Q, that ticker out of here. Uh, all the retail left holding the bag. Derek is probably is pretty much spot on this one. It's one of those things. If you got in 2021 and you hit all-time highs, I got to ask you the question. Is this a good time for you to be here? Because I, if, if memory serves, I think we had around 67, 69,000 for an all-time high for Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum almost hit uh, 5,000. Cardano hit around $3, and who knows how much the rest of them did. But now we are seeing uh, much, much lower uh, cryptos. Does that mean that this is the time to buy? Eh. Some would say yes, and some would say no. I personally say I don't know. This is not the time for me to back up the truck and go all in. I think there's a lot more downside uh, coming up, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe something comes out. Like, did anybody, not anybody, did the majority of people see FTX collapsing totally, right? All the people that were out there that said the bottom was in in June, and it was a lot of people, didn't see this coming. And they want to say, you know, it's a black swan event. Sure. I, I get that. That's okay. But I'm just saying, how many other black swan events could we potentially see? Or how many, you know, positivities could we see? How much could we see where, I don't know, the U.S. government comes out and says, okay, here's the clarity. This is what we consider a currency and a commodity. And here's what we see as far as, uh, as a security. And these are the ones that fall under the CFTC, the, the com or, uh, Commodities Commission. And uh, that'll go that way. And we're going to start that right now. If that happened and it gives consumer protections, especially to the institutions, how big would that be? Then we would blast off. Let's say the CPI numbers come back low again. Let's say, I don't know, Jerome Powell for some reason says, you know what? We're going to lay off. We're doing our job and uh, inflation's coming down. Then it could go off to the moon. However, the flip side, we just talked about what happens if FTX and this contagion really rears its ugly head and things start faltering left and right. Then, of course, what did the CPI numbers come out hot again? And Jerome Powell's like, well, forget that. 75 basis points, hello, 100 bips. You never know. So for me, since I don't know, I have a crystal ball. The same thing happens every day. It's quite boring. Over on Coinbase. Orders get executed every morning. And I buy Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a handful of alts. Also, the other, there's other alts that I buy once a week. And I just will do that for the next two years. Maybe three until the next bull run comes. I could care less because I think these things are going to happen out that way. If I'm here for the long term, I'll be okay. So the question is, how do you want to look at that? Are you holding the bag? Can you control that? Or something that you want to do else? All right. My man, Tom. Tom, I got to tell you, you did an excellent job uh, when you were on DCA show. I really appreciate that. And uh, if you don't follow Tom, He's got a great channel, a TA, things that I do not understand. <laughs> Follow Tom. Tom, I'd love to have you on the show at some point. And your thank you. 2,700 views, only 5 or 6 likes. I would like uh, one of those things. I would like a couple more likes. Apparently, that's the only way that YouTube seems to understand me. Amy Johnson, softball. Oh, and Tom just hit me up in the DMs. World Mobile Token. Exactly. So, you know, there's this thing. Uh, I was thinking about this pretty hard. And first of all, I want to share something with everybody. If you have problems with right now with uh, with the mental aspect of this, and of course, and like hopefully I alleviate some of your fears and, and you know trying to help you work your way through it in your own way because your goals are not my goals. But there's a link in the description, and if you scroll down, I mean all the way down, there's this thing called recommendations, and it's for mindset, and it's the Daily Stoic. And it's a free newsletter and it's sent out by Ryan Holiday. And he gives, uh, just quotes some of the great Stoics from all time, Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus, Seneca. And those things really help put your mindset in the right place. So right now we know that things suck. We know things are gonna go, go sideways. So first of all, subscribe to that. It'll help you out a lot. And the second of all, the thing I always think about is this, is I always think, am I doing enough? Am I doing enough for helping people? And am I into crypto because I'm greedy 
and I want to change my bank account. Well, yes and yes. I'm not doing enough. And then I think to myself, what should I be doing more? <sighs> I'm only one person. I can only do you know, so much volunteer hours, but that helps. I can only give so much money out, and that helps. But I can support the causes and the projects that are doing exceptional work throughout the world. And of course, one of those is World Mobile Token. There is a video I did. Just search for Dan or Digital Asset News and World Mobile Token, uh, giving connectivity to uh, areas of Africa, which I think is going to be or could be one of the next superpowers in the next 30 to 40 years. Natural resources are, are through the roof. And they're actually doing something right now via Cardano to give them telecommunications and connections at a fraction of the price of where they wouldn't be able to do that anymore. And they use these things called aerostats and uh, they use a lot of uh, the people that are on the ground and that are, uh, of course, they all, all have uh, a history of telecommunications for like, you know, I think the combined it's like over 100 years between all of them. So those type of things, I think, well, if I support those, I mean, I'm doing good in my own little way. Anyhow, that's just what I think. It's a good point, Amy. Thank you. African superpower. Uh, Jeff, you always make my day a little smoother. Don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm going to do after this? I'm going to shut this computer off. And uh, I've got a meetup for uh, volleyball. <laughs> I'm going to go play volleyball on the beach. And then I'll probably play a little beach tennis. If you haven't played beach tennis, it's awesome. One of these uh, new sports that's coming up. And uh, man, it's uh, really fun. So that'll be my day. And I could care less about my portfolio. Whatever. Let's see. Yeah, and Todd's got a good point. Deep respect to you, Rob. Got to get out of the current price mindset and report on the new paradigm being built. You have to also remember this. Like in 2018, 2019, I used to hate YouTubers because I was like, how the hell? Mostly 2018. I was like, how the hell can they be so upbeat and positive about things when the market just crashes? I just lost 85% of my portfolio value. And these guys are telling me to buy more. Who the hell do they think they are? They don't know me. And it was true. And uh, now that I'm here on the other side, I'm like, oh, now it all makes sense. Because, like, it's just time. And if you have a short, narrow window, of course, it's awful. It doesn't really work out. But it, if you look out uh, years in advance, that's where the money's made. And uh, I think Ben says it best. Ben from the Cryptoverse. And he says, uh, millionaires are made in the bear market. That's just the truth. Uh, Rob says, Rob, you still micro saying, or is the micro part going away? <laughs> I was on that crash. I was like, wow, you know, I still think it's going to go lower. So I don't, I don't know how low it's going to go. So I still micro DCA. And what I mean by that is, <clears throat> let's say, for example, I put in $200 a day in Bitcoin. Let's just say, but now I'm like, well, I don't know which way it's going, but I don't want to be out of it. So I'm just going to put in like 20, 25 bucks a day or whatever it is. And uh, along the way, if I keep doing that and I plant those seeds and then the crops grow, which would be uh, a gain, I start to chop and say, well, I made 10% uh, just on this one day alone. After all these uh, months of micro DCAing, I'll get some profits here. And we talked about that. I told you exactly when I take my profits. And uh, when you see a bunch of green, 10% or more, usually that's me taking profits. And then, of course, it goes down. So, uh, yeah, I'm still micro DCing. And that's it. Oh, Hassan says, Rob, are you buying any soul? So the thing is, if you like, soul is one of those funny things because people hate it because they talk about how non-decentralized it is. Which, let's be honest, if you can call up uh, all, your, all your node operators and go, look, you guys got to take the cartridge out and blow on it and then reset everything, uh, then in that, in that situation, that is not decentralized. Oh, sorry. So in, in this situation, like we know it's not decentralized. However, I can't say I'm buying anything of, of Solana, but I still hold Solana. Because there's no reason for me to let go of it because it just went, it just took a big dump. Now, does that mean that I want to keep going for it? No, I'm going to actually for this one, I'm going to sit back for a little bit. But there's some other ones I've been DCing. Like, I still like, 
I still like Algorand. I still like Avalanche. I still like Cardano. I still like Polkadot and Chainlink. I think we're going to use uh, that and some other things. But uh, those are the ones that I get. It's not something crazy, just pretty boring stuff. <laughs> That's James calling. You heard Rob talking about Solana. James is doing pretty good. I know people give James a lot of guff, but I will tell you this. Like, um, when I was, because let's be honest, we all know that I really liked Voyager and I really wanted to succeed and didn't succeed. Just like Kevin O'Leary didn't work out, right? I mean, thankfully, it allowed me two weeks before to put out that video and talk about, hey, look, Voyager, they made $640 million loan to Three Arrows Capital without collateral. That's not going to fly. And that's pretty much the time when I did those, those rules. And it worked out pretty well. However, if you hadn't watched my videos for, the, for those two weeks and just spaced out, you would have gotten stuck just like I got stuck. I actually left uh, all my VGX tokens. I didn't sell them. I left them on there. Good five figures. I was one of the top tiers, right? That happens. So when that happened, you know, when that and Celsius went down, you know, I got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of hate, which rightfully so. I mean, I talked about it, right? When I say that, hey, I'm going to raise my hand and say, yes, I did talk about it. But I did try to get everybody out as fast as possible. I mean, Celsius, the day that I made the video to take things out, the day they canceled things. So when people were attacking me, James came out and was like, look, Rob's, he's got a good amount of uh, information, a little bit of knowledge, and uh, this thing's going to work out for him. These things happen. And I appreciate that. And, and, and James right now is a big Solana bull. I think we, can, we all know that. Uh, but for me, I'm like, What's the problem? So James, again, James is there to, he, he's there to change his, his, his wallet. Is there anything wrong with that? No. He's got way more Bitcoin and Ethereum. So if you're a Bitcoin maxi, uh, he's one of, you, one of you guys in some way, shape or form. And we are doing these things, or he's doing these things, and he holds Bitcoin right now. So um, as far as that, I like him on the show. I like James on the show because he gives a different perspective. Was I right all the time? No. Was Ben right all the time? Ben will even admit it. He's like, look, those uh, extended extended uh, cycle theories didn't work out too hot. We're all wrong at some point. Nobody is uh, perfect and that's it. So uh, <laughs> James getting James is going to get some, some guff on Solana. But guess what? When it bounces back, you'll be like, man, it worked out pretty well. So that's it. I like James too. Let's see. Yeah, James's position is less than one percent of his portfolio. Like I told you, I remember he's a he's a he's a trader, so he, he put the stop losses in. He's a smart guy. <laughs> well, yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, I make I make mistakes all every day, all day long. That's my wife. And then crypto, watch how many people move to Cardano. We'll see. We'll see. Can everybody do me a favor? And could you bombard Charles Hoskinson to come on the show and do the interview? I had him lined up, then he'd cancel on me. That'd be great. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Travis are right until they aren't. Yeah. Watch Tom Crown. He'll tell you how to, how to do those charts. I don't get it. Uh, Captain Kurt, <laughs> Captain Kurt, make sure you take profits. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a very simple <clears throat> things are made quite difficult for some reason, right? Um, invest for the long haul, get into something that you think is going to do well, diversify, and uh, take profits along the way. I don't know if I can say that's financial advice, but it pretty much is. I mean, diversify. I don't think anybody's gonna gonna fault me on that one. Take profits. I don't, know. I don't know. Maybe that's wrong. I, it's just what I do. Let's see. What else have we got? I would love that too, meme. Did you see his interview with BitBoy? I can't remember if I did or not. Would love to see an in-person DC live. That would be great. That would be awesome. All three of us together. Maybe we'll do it in the Bitcoin conference or something like that. I think everybody should come here to Puerto Rico, though. Invite, 
invite Richard Harper fun. I've had him on the show. There was some parts I had to cut out because, you know, Richard goes, he goes pretty hard. Oh, man. Ty Boy says, hey, Rob, is your opinion on silo change? Are you still in or fully out of the project? So I, I think I still, no, I sold it. Because silo, you can only get that on gate IO. I did a video on silo and it made a lot of sense. You know, why silo, silo could be pretty, do pretty well. Had a working app. I actually had something going on, a little utility. You know, the the, the uh, team itself uh, had a, a decent track record. And I said, well, all these guys, guys, all these guys have to do is grow. But the thing is that that's the funny thing about business is that you can have a great idea and a great business. And it's just, if you don't have great, great marketing, you don't have things to just pick up. It just never takes off for some reason. I don't know why that is. It's a, it's, it's like that, that great restaurant on the street from your, from your house, right? You, you go there and you're like, wow, this is awesome. It's always dead. What happened? Well, I love this food. I don't know what it is. And then, you know, two, three months later, they close it down. Another restaurant opens up. What happened? It's the way the business goes. I mean, uh, you can take a look at the statistics. Small businesses, 50% fail, I think, was within the first five years. So that's how it goes. Mm, I think I phoned one too early. Yeah, maybe. Nah. You know what? In 10 years, Phil, who knows? Probably not. Depends on what you bought. If it was, if it was Luna, you, yeah. You got me in that one. <laughs> Send... Send the Dan corporate jet. I, uh, have you ever met SPF in person? No. But it, there are some stories on Twitter that are quite disturbing. So if you, if not for the faint of heart, I'll just say that. Crypto Phil, we are all early. That is true. What's your opinion of BitBoy? Uh, ben seems like he's a pretty passionate guy. I saw the apology video. We talked about, hey, you know, got to be, got to come clean. I that was pretty cool. Uh, I think everybody needs, there is a different perspective and a person for everybody in, in every single uh, venue, we'd say. So like with, uh, with BitBoy, he's more of a, you know, he's a better showman than I am. And uh, he's got a pretty big following. I know some people hate, his, hate him and some people love him, but I think that's what makes him polarizing. So eh, that's about it. I watch a video every so often. I got asked to be on that, uh, around the blockchain thing, but I always get busy. Eh, let's see. Beardy says, was 2018 as bad? You know what? I just interviewed Simon Dixon yesterday. And I'm going to release the video tomorrow. First of all, it was a great video. Simon from Bank of the Future, he was buying uh, Bitcoin at three bucks. <laughs> and he said, and I asked him, I asked him that exact question, Birdie. I said, was this, is this the worst year you ever ha you've ever seen it? And uh, I'll, I'll let you watch the video. But essentially, he's like, it's all the same stuff, man. It's all the same stuff. It's just bigger. And that's about it. Uh, <laughs> Rob, when I watch ECA, I can't stop watching your hand. You should do a whole segment that's just your hand in front. When I get bored, I start to just fidget. And that's the problem. Marty, welcome. Thanks for becoming a dollar nine nine member here at uh, Digital Asset News. Grand Coder, hi Rob. How do you feel about altcoins in general in Q4? I think uh, I think they're not going to do too well. Quite honestly. Uh, if you're looking for some massive gains, it's not going to happen. However, there are gains to be had. In every bear market, even in 2018, uh, we saw Chainlink uh, just pop off. Like I think it was one day like or like a week, like 25%, 50% jump. Crazy. So there's always little, little bear market rallies in a bear market. So, I mean, just, just take that for what it is. But across the board, all coins probably won't do too hot. But what do I know? You know? That's why I, I dollar cost averaging is for is for the lazy person, and I'm super lazy, so that just works out. Mm, Doge is getting stronger, but yeah, you know what? You know what's up today? Almost ten percent. Doge, Dogecoin. Uh, da -da -da -da. I think 
Oof, that's a hot take. I think SBF's persona is orchestrated. Somebody said that's it's all orchestrated. It's all done by uh, <laughs> who knows. Um, will Sam go to jail? We'll find out. Ah, Marty just came to level one. Everybody, welcome, Marty. Who wants to be a, a, an admin? Let's start handing out wrenches, huh? Let's see. Hold on. Let me. Whew. That's a lot of wrenches already. Vicky, you're already a, a wrench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Marty signs up and becomes a moderator. Look, check it out. DD. Hold on. Ah, you just want to say. <laughs> Rusty bot. I don't know if I could if I could handle the pressure. Uh, Jeff. Jeff has been here many a days. Many, many. And he's always he's always on here when you, we should be working. Just kidding, Larry. Marco Acevedo. I'll get you next time. Old Bear. And I think. Crypto Tech. Mad Cow, you're already a wrench. What are you talking about? Okay. London. Okay. So that's it for right now. I'll hand them out later. So that's what we got. So let's see. Let me make sure I got some more questions and that's it. We're coming up in an hour. Old Bear, I think I got you already. You're pressure. Yeah. It's, it's a, you're an exclusive club of only like 100 admins on my channel. It's like a wrench party. Which I think we need. Ben, I we talked about this to Ben. He said, I should probably get some more admins. Into the forest, good morning. <laughs> Breaking the hacker sent the funds of Vitaly and Susan. I don't think that's true. But who knows? Yeah, exactly. Everybody do a search for Alameda CEO interview and just watch that and tell me what you think. That's all I'll say. And that's it. All right, buddy. So look, I think we're good for today. Again, the big takeaway is this. It's going to suck for a while. Uh, that's that, that's the truth. If you're like me, you're probably hoping that it uh, really starts to suck so the price can go down. Because in the long run, you know, things tend to work out. The big, the big question that we have is how do we get to that next level? How do we get out of the kiddie pool, the kiddie table? Is it going to be regulation from the government? Is it going to be self-regulation? Are we able to police ourselves? Got to tell you, it's very tough when you have uh, human emotions and greed and, and incompetency running amok, but uh, we'll see how it works. Anyhow, that's it for today. So, guys, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Always consider subscribing. A lot of things to talk about are time sensitive. And that's it for today. So, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate all you on a Saturday. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Adios. Adios.